I've been getting a lot of messages on how to become a dermatologist in the UK. Hi, my name is Dr. Emma Derma and I'm a dermatology specialist trainee working in the UK. In this video, I'm going to go through all the ways that you can become a dermatologist. So I'm going to go through the training route, the non-training route, and alternative pathways. To become a consultant dermatologist, first of all, you need to get a medical degree and you need to enter into a medical school and either complete five or six years of medical school. Completing medical school, you would need to go into foundation year training. This usually involves two years training. If you want to go through the bog standard route of becoming a consultant dermatologist, the most standard route is getting a national training number. Getting a national training number, you would need to go into a training route. Once you've completed your foundation year training, you need to go into IMT training which is internal medical training. So this usually takes around two or three years. You would only need to complete two years to go into dermatology training. If you're doing the IMT route you would need to complete your MRCP which is the membership of Royal College of Physicians exam and this is usually a three-step exam of part one, part two and paces. Once you've done IMT training you can then go into dermatology training. You would need to complete interviews before you get into dermatology training and there is usually one round of getting an interview to get into dermatology training. So dermatology training usually takes four years and you need to complete an exam called a specialist certificate exam before you become a consultant dermatologist. Once you've completed your four years training, you'll then be accredited by the GMC to work as a consultant dermatologist. You can also go into the surgical route or the paediatric route if you want to get a dermatology training number. Through the surgical route, you need to have completed two years of core surgical training and you would need to complete your MRCS. Through the paediatric route, you need to complete two to three years of level one paediatric training and you would have needed to complete your full MRCPCH. However, with the surgical and paediatric route, you need to have 12 months of acute medical experience or internal medicine capabilities. So that is the most bog standard route of becoming a consultant dermatologist. The pros of this training is that it is the most accredited type of training to become a consultant dermatologist. Everyone will recognize your training. However, there are some cons to this training route. First of all, it is extremely difficult in getting a national training number in dermatology. When I applied, there were only 12 jobs in a country and there were hundreds of applicants. So it is quite competitive. You might need to travel somewhere else to work to get into dermatology training training or you might need to lose that number. So if you do have family in London and you got a job in Scotland then it's going to be quite difficult for you to relocate and shift your family to Scotland for a training number. The alternative pathway is a non-training route. This is a great option if you're unable to get a national training number which is really competitive and really difficult or you're not flexible to move anywhere in the country or if you have worked abroad in dermatology and you wish to to transfer your dermatology training in the UK to become a consultant dermatologist. This route is a CESA route, the Certificate of Eligibility for Special Registration. To be eligible for the CESA route, you need to have a completed an undergraduate medical degree from either the UK or even abroad, and doctors interested in the CESA route would need to apply to the General Medical Council, which is our regulating body responsible for granting specialist registration. So the application submitted to the GMC needs to have evidence of your qualification, training and experience in dermatology. To do that, the CESA doctors need to fulfil the portfolio like a dermatology trainee. So they need to fulfil the same amount of evidence, training, procedures, once you've done all of the training and portfolio requirements, you then uh, submit this to the GMC and the GMC assesses this to see if you have fulfilled all the requirements. This assessment includes the doctor's duration of the training, any additional qualification and their quality of clinical experience. Once the GMC is satisfied with your training, your evidence and your portfolio, they will then give you specialist registration to work as an independent dermatologist. The benefit for going through this route is that it is flexible especially if you cannot move to a different location for your national training number. You are independent of your own portfolio 
However, there are downsides for this. This is a relatively new pathway, so some departments may not recognize you as being an independent dermatologist. However, this is now becoming rare because everyone is recognizing the CESA pathway because there are less training numbers and we need more dermatologists. The other is it can be quite difficult in getting your evidence for your portfolio since you have to be quite independent with your portfolio. You will need an extremely supportive consultant dermatologist to help support you along the way and you need to research yourself on what curriculum requirements you need. It can be complex and you may need considerable time in completing this evidence. If you are seeking to go into the CESA pathway then I would recommend to seek advice from the British Association of Dermatologists and the GMC before applying. So the other alternative pathway is not technically a consultant dermatologist, but it's the GP with an extended role in dermatology. But to become a GP, you need to complete your undergraduate medical degree, do two years of foundation training, and get accepted into your GP training program, which usually lasts for three years. You need to complete your MRC GP, which is a postgraduate medical exam, which you need to complete before you become a fully fledged GP. Once you've become a GP, you need to submit an application to the British Association of Dermatologists to be accredited as a GP with extended role in dermatology. And there are three groups of what type of GP with extended role of dermatology you want to be. There's group one, which is medical dermatology, group two, which is skin cancers and skin lesions, and group three, which is both of them combined. And depending on which group you want to be in, you need to submit evidence corresponding to those groups to the British Association of Dermatologists. So the pros is that you get to work as a GP and you get to work in dermatology as well. So you get the best of both worlds. If you do not want to be a consultant dermatologist because you find that you don't want to concentrate on skin only and you want to do other aspects of general health, then this is a great option for you. The other pro of being a GP with dermatology is relatively less competitive than going into dermatology training. Bearing in mind, I do know a friend who got into dermatology training and not GP training. And of course, this is a relatively short training route if you want to do dermatology but you do not want to spend that many years on becoming a consultant dermatologist. The downside of going through this route is that you won't be a fully fledged independent consultant dermatologist and there are limitations on what you can do and as a GP you may be limited on what you can prescribe such as biologics. So those are the three routes of becoming a dermatologist. If you do want more information, I'll put to all the information and links in the description box below. But if you do have any specific questions, I'll try to answer them in the comments 